Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about how to calculate expected value, different methods of doing that, and why they matter and should matter to you. We talk about expected value quite a bit, and um, it's something that we use oftentimes when we're talking about sealed magic cards, trying to get a sense of how much value is in the box of something, and getting a little bit of a deeper dive on the mechanics of how this is calculated I think is really helpful. We're going to be taking a look at three sets today. I'm looking at Shadows over Innistrad, a standard legal set back at the time, um, kind of your, your typical set. We got Jumpstart, uh, kind of oddball supplemental product, and then we've got Modern Horizons 1 as our other point of comparison, sort of our master style set, um, even though it's not really a master's product, kind of a supplemental thing, but I figured it was a nice thing to throw into the mix as a point of comparison. So first up, um, for those of you who are uninitiated, perhaps, the high, whole idea of EV is you're getting a sense of, if I crack open a pack, of this set of, let's say, Jumpstart, what is my, on average, value of the cards in that pack? That's a pack EV, and then we got the box EV, which basically, well, if you got 24 packs in the box, take your pack EV times 24, or 36, depending on the box. Generally speaking, you always calculate an EV the same way. You have to know the probability of opening up any given card and then you multiply that by its price to get your sort of expectation of the contribution of that card. So the idea here, here's Ren and Six, it's worth almost 100 bucks. Here's your probability of getting it, one in 15, there's 15 mythics and there's a one in eight chance of a card being a mythic in a given booster pack. And therefore, um, in a given booster pack of Modern Horizons 1, 83 cents of value is contributed by the fact that Ren and Six could be in that pack pretty good, because um, Ren 6 is a lot of money, and there's a non-zero chance of opening it. So as you add more and more cards into your EV calculation, that's why the pack EV starts to go up and up and up here. This is sort of my running total. And I mean, all that's fine and good, but the really big question about how you calculate EV is, where do you draw the line of cards that matter? for the EV calculation. Because obviously, the more cards you put into the mix, the higher your pack EV is gonna get. And at some point, there's gonna be cards here that you just don't care about. Like, do you really care if you open this um, Talisman of Creativity? It's worth buck fifty, but is that actually like a meaningful card to you? Here we've got like a snow-covered land, snow-covered island. Does that matter to you? At some point, you start digging down into like, you know, 10 cent commons. And sure, they are, they have a market price on them, but are they actually worth anything? And the question of where to draw the line is very, therefore, kind of subjective. Um, for me, I've often drawn the line at $2. My reasoning for having a $2 cut point is that anything below $2 is not really worth my while to try to like sell on some sort of online marketplace. Um, mostly because, you know, if I sold a generous gift for $2, uh, I would have to ship that out, and there's costs associated with doing that, but I would still make a, a, a decent amount of money doing so. On the other hand, if I sold a carrion feeder at $1.02, you know, after I factor in the, the stamp, the postage, I, I, this is not really worth my time to deal with. And that's certainly the case once you start dealing with like, you know, 10 cent rares or whatever. So oftentimes we have to draw a cut, cut off point um, to get us a feel for like what cards actually matter, what cards are going to actually contribute to the value of your cards you open that you're not going to just sort of dump in a box to unload as bulk. There's different cut points, of course. It's a matter of preference, but one of the questions that I wanted to explore here is, well, how much does it matter? How much does it really make a big difference um, to the overall EV of your box? And uh, for different sets, it matters quite differently. And that's this kind of shocking, actually, to kind of get your head around this. So let's look at Modern Horizons 1. If you put the cut point at $2, you get a box EV of 260 and 50 cents. Now, I want to point out one quick thing. I'm only calculating non-foil stuff here. I'm not dealing with the foils. Uh, if you add in the foils, your EV is going to go up quite um, 
quite a bit. I just didn't deal with the foils because it's just a, a bunch of more columns in the spreadsheet. It's a bunch of TDM and didn't want to deal with it. My points here are still going to probably be valid even if you threw in the foils. Um, the interesting thing for Modern Horizons 1 is that if you count these $1 to $2 cards, there aren't that many of them, but they matter a lot because you're looking at some a freaking common in here. You're looking at basic lands and a couple of uncommons. You know, those are high probability cards, and that's going to contribute a lot then to your EV. And so actually, if you um, include these $1 to $2 cards that boosts your value of your seal box by almost $45, that's a lot. I mean, that's like, uh, you know, 16, 17% of your box EV would be from one to $2 cards if you took this price down here as your EV, $303.70. Um, that's, that, that's substantial. So it matters a lot here because of the nature of the cards you're now including in your calculation. Here in Jumpstart Land, the, the story is very different. Um, these $1 to $2 cards don't actually contribute all that much, only about $5. So if you said, if I'm drawing the line at $1, my EV is 110 and only about five of those bucks are um, contributing uh, from the $1 to $2 cards, so like a little less than 5%. For Shadows in, over Innistrad, it's actually um, an even bigger deal. Uh, $12, essentially, of this pretty puny um, box EV down here are contributed by the $1 to $2 cards, mostly because it's got several uncommons in it. One thing I wanted to do to visualize this is by uh, making some graphs, and I'll share those with you because I think they're kind of neat. What you're going to see here, here's your cutoff price. Obviously, if you make your cutoff price very, very, very high, your EV is going to be very, very low. Because <laughs> if I'm only counting $10 and above, right, that basically eliminates most cards out of the set. And as you dig deeper, deeper in lower prices, your EV will go up and up and up. So that gives you a sense of things. To me, it does look like there's an overall sort of linear trend here, though it does sort of have a bit of a curve here. Um, Jumpstart actually looks very different. It's much smoother, linear style here as you go deeper into the cheaper cards. Jumpstart is kind of a weird set, though. The probabilities and all that stuff are just a little different. Here's Modern Horizons 1. Um, it looks linear for a while. Let's get Jumpstart out of the way, shall we? Um, here's Modern Horizons. It looks linear for a while and then sort of does this curve at the end, mostly because as you start to dig down into the lower prices, you're going to start uncorking all of those high probability cards, the commons, the uncommons, the basic lands, and that really changes things. So... Does that mean there's one right way to do this? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's a judgment call. I mean, some For somebody, a 50-cent card might matter in the EV of what they're opening. Um, but if you're like a big um, trying to flip cards, like if you're trying to crack these boxes open and um, just flip them, uh, you know, anything $1 to $2 might not be worth your while, worth your time, or I don't know. I mean, you have to think about this sort of stuff as you think about EV. So... Um, I hope that you learn something here. I don't think there's a definitive answer. Um, my, you know, my per particular personal preference happens to be that sort of $2 cutoff point, but other people might feel differently. And now at the very least, you can see how those different things actually make a difference. So um, hope you learned something from this. Thanks for sticking with me for almost 10 minutes.